Okay, Aaron, I see a lot of snakes in front of us. Why don't you tell me a little bit about these specimens that I'm, I'm not afraid of, but mildly uncomfortable. I guess what I'll start with is that we have two main preservation techniques here. We have specimens that are preserved in ethanol alcohol, and we have specimens here that have been prepared using a freeze dryer. This is a timber rattlesnake. Okay. These are endangered in Ohio, and uh, they're also endangered in our neighboring state of Pennsylvania. Uh, timber rattlesnakes especially are vilified, uh, but there's a lot of mounting evidence now that they're really important for the control of Lyme disease. This is a black rat snake. This is probably one of the most common snakes in Ohio. A lot of people find them in their basements. Um, they're actually pretty popular in the pet trade. They're very docile. Even hmm. wild specimens will calm down very quickly. This is the eastern Massasauga, also called the swamp rattler, and it's Ooh. also endangered in Ohio, um, mostly due to habitat loss. So I got all of these out uh, to sort of demonstrate a point that I wanted to make, mm -hmm. and this is part of the game that I like to call Find the Copperhead. Oh, okay. Uh, it's because one of these? Yes, there are, there's one copperhead in this group so of snakes. So copperhead is a venomous snake, right? That's correct. And there aren't that many venomous snakes in Ohio. There are three species. These are two of them, and the copperhead is the third. Okay. This one? That actually is the copperhead. Yes! <laughs> Do I win a prize? Don't say a snake. Copperheads are responsible for most of the bites in the United States. There's about 8,000 reported bites to the CDC every wow. year, on average. Uh, but there's only five deaths due to snake bite hmm. every year. The only reason why a copperhead would ever bite anybody is because you've disturbed it. This is a western hognose. Western hognose snake. But you can see why they're called a hognose, because he's got a little have... upturned snout. Uh, they tend to be naturally curious, mm -hmm. and uh, they're, they're diurnal, which is, is nice. What is that? They're active during the day. So his habitat, where you mentioned he likes sandy soil? Yeah, hence the upturned snout. They use that for digging. And uh, they're, but one of their behaviors is, is burrowing. So if you have them in captivity, then they should be in something that they can dig into. He it's, does have a cute face. See, not isn't gonna he lie. cute? So when, he snakes out, when snakes stick out their tongues like that, are they sort of getting their senses? What's that about? Yeah, that's, uh, that's their main sensory organ. They, uh, it's, got, it's forked, and they have a special organ in the roof of their mouth called the Jacobson's organ. And it's basically just a really sophisticated smelling um, organ. Okay. He's soft and scaly, but not slimy. No, not slimy at all. They're very dry, and they're really pleasant to hold because you can kind feel their, their muscles. Yeah, it's, they're very silky. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> He's beautiful. I think so, too. Well, thank you, Aaron. Thank you so much for educating us and for introducing us to this guy. This has been wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for having me.